Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We are Transmatic Manufacturing, a deep draw metal stamping supplier based out of Holland, Michigan. My name is Jessica Bloor. I'm Inside Sales Manager. And with me today is Ron D'Alessandro, our Director of Advanced Product Development. Today, we're going to be talking to you a little bit about the differences between progressive and transfer high volume stamping. So you might be asking why those two processes specifically? There's so many different metal manufacturing processes out there, including machining, die cast, cold heading, fine blade, the list goes on and on. But the reason why we really wanna focus on transfer stamping and progressive stamping today is because these are the two processes that are key for complex drawn high volume applications. A lot of these types of components can be found in the automotive market, but there are many other markets out there that require complex, tightly toleranced component part. So what is deep draw? Deep draw typically means that the length of the part exceeds its diameter. Here's a photo of component parts that we manufacture here at Transmatic. Many of these parts meet this definition. You'll notice that they all don't. Uh, some of these shorter component parts would be examples of components that would be good fits to run on a progressive die. And we'll talk a little bit about some of that reasoning as Ron goes into the advantages and disadvantages of transfer versus progressive stamping. So a little bit about Transmatic. Uh, we have three locations. Holland, Michigan is our headquarters. We also have facilities in Monterey, Mexico and Suzhou, China. As I mentioned, we focus on deep draw stamping. The majority of our presses are transfer presses, but we do have the capability to do progressive stamping as well. We also have assembly and laser weld capabilities as well as non-destructive testing. And with that, I'll pass it off to Ron to get into the nitty gritty of why you're all here. Let's talk about progressive and transfer stamping. Thank you, Jessica. What we have here is a traditional straight side press on the left and an eyelet transfer press there on the right. They're not very much the same at all. I mean, you have up and down vertical motion. Maybe that's about all that's in common between these two presses. Uh, I can tell you that the press on the left is very simple in terms of its operation and function, whereas the press on the right, the transfer press, a lot more going on, a lot more complication. And when we start talking about tool design and development, you'll see that uh, one way that I like to describe the differences is complex tooling in Prague, simple press, complex uh, press, and simplified tool. And we'll talk a little bit more about that and what that means as we go forward. Here's a cross section of a progressive die and also a strip. So you'll see the strip on the bottom of how that part is carried. And you'll notice that there's a carry web. That carry web is basically holding the strip together, holding the parts together. It's kind of the automatic feed mechanism that transfers the part from station to station. In this particular case, we're traveling from uh, right to left. Each of those uh, stations is performing an operation, starting from a blank and cup and several uh, you know, deep drawn uh, steps in the process, and at the end, uh, the part is clipped off. You can see that all of the tools are mounted into a die set. There's an awful lot going on, but it's all self-contained. It's all integrated. These types of dies are real easy to roll them right into the press and get set up using hy hydraulic clamping systems. And, you know, within 15 minutes or so, you can get up and running on a die like this. As you can see, it a lot more expensive too because there's a lot of moving parts that are all self-contained on a transfer press it's the other way around it's simple tooling and the press again is more more comp complicated but in this particular case we're looking like at a, what we call an eyelet transfer icop press which stands for individual cam driven press and the tools are mounted into uh, punch holders. The punches are mounted into punch holders and the dies are, are mounted into a, a, a uh, their inserts loaded into a die holder on the bottom side. You, in, a, in a typical ICOP, which is a cam driven press, there's a top shaft. The top shaft drives a cam, the cam drives the plunger. The plunger has the punch and the punch drives into the tool, into the die. Uh, you know, it might sound simple. There's a lot going on there, 
And it, as you would imagine, that that press is pretty complicated, but the tools are relatively simple. Now, simple is a relative word because we add a lot of complication to some of our tools by doing a lot of side motion uh, turnovers and things of that nature. Uh, but the tools are, 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 they're all open, you know, it's all individual, they're all in, loaded into the press individually. You can see on the bottom, there's a slide, that transfer slide is actuated typically by a, a shaft, a bevel gear that drives the slide back and forth, and that's what transfers the part from station to station using what's called transfer fingers. You can see the transfer fingers there that are holding the parts in red in the illustration below. Let's talk about advantages of progressive tooling. First of all, and I mentioned earlier, the setup times, it's quick. It's quick because everything's already set up. Uh, with, you know, a lot of companies use rolling bolsters and you can, you can roll a die into a die bed, clamp it, and it probably takes longer to thread the coil into the feeding system than it does to load the tool and to get that clamped up and ready. But uh, usually within minutes, you can be pretty much up and running. The other advantage, other than speed and efficiency, which kind of lends itself to just in time type processes, but the other advantage is you can go multiple out. What you're looking at there underneath, that's you're showing a strip running a two out operation. That, that's efficiency. You can run five out. You can run more out, you know, depending on the product design and depending on you know the depth of draw and things of that nature a lot of other things come into play but it is possible to run more than one out at a time again it's a carry web that carries the part transfers from station to station there's advantages to that because that transfer system is basically integrated it's all in the part itself some of the disadvantages right out of the gate i'm going to tell you that in most cases material content is higher in a progressive tool and doing a deep draw application than it is in a transfer operation. And that's just due, due to the fact that you have to have that carry web. So there's extra material on the ends or sides of the parts to be able to accommodate that material to carry it. Higher material content, especially when you're talking copper, brass, ink canal, and some of the higher exotic type material, that becomes a real big factor in, in overall cost. So that's something that to definitely to consider. The other thing is you're limited your depth of draw. I don't know, I can't tell you what that threshold is, uh, but you can only you get a stretch web to move so far before that stretch web either fractures or the depth of draw is so long that the integrity of that strip is compromised and you can no longer transfer it and get it back to die level and slide it to the next station. Uh, so there's, there's, there's a threshold that you cross there. Uh, the other thing that disadvantage is you can't turn the part over. You can you can do you know straight up and down and you can go sideways with the side motion tooling, um, but if you're doing a step draw, for instance, and you have a bottom in a part, and uh, you have to get rid of that slug somehow, and for instance, and uh, to you know if you can turn the part over, uh, you'd be able to get rid of that slug. Uh, if you can't, that punch, you'll have to have a slug sucker to remove the the, the, the slug. One of the other things, and this is a big one here, fixed pitch. I mean, in some ways, it's nice to have a fixed pitch because everything is set. If for whatever reason, the design engineer comes up with a new design or a design that's, you know, that requires you to go in and make a pitch change, you can't change the pitch, not very easily anyway. So once that pitch is fixed, if you're going prog die and you think you're going to have a, you know, a lot of design changes or different iterations, there's only so many idle stations that you can incorporate into a progressive tool where you, all of a sudden you really run out of real estate and the cost to revamp that tool for that engineering change could become significant. Now let's talk about transfer press operations and we're going to start off with material utilization. You can see there in the very first slide where you have a single cut, the second slide is a double cut and then you have triple cut. When you go from single to triple, you can see that it's the distance between the circles, there's a lot more material available in a single cut, or that's just left over. That's just the nature of, of cutting a circle out of a, uh, out of a rectangle. That's just the way that it is. When you go double cut, you can get much better material utilization. Same thing on triple cut, or even more. You can go out even more than that. At Transmatic, almost every one of our operations 
we use an oscillating feed so that we can stagger our, our, our material as it's going into the tool, and that way we can get better material utilization. Turning a part over. Uh, this is a real big deal in, in, in doing a, a transfer type operation. It gives us a lot more flexibility. You can add a lot, a lot of complex features and add some secondary operations that would normally be done in secondaries, but you're doing them all in line in the press all at one time. Some of the disadvantages are we can really only run one out. I mean, there are instances where we can run two out or even more out. If you have enough bed space and you feed a cup into, into the press or a partial um, drawn part into, into the press, you can run more than one out. But that, re that requires you know, bowls and track systems and conveyor systems that you have to integrate in along with the, with, with the uh, press and the tool. Uh, so I would say in most cases, you, know, you have to assume that in a transfer operation, it's one out at a time. Um, tools are pretty, you know, easy to handle uh, in terms of loading in and out of the press, but they do take a long time to get set up. Transfer fingers sometimes can cause some misfeeds. You know, you don't have a connected strip, so you're relying on those transfer fingers to handle that part from station to station without turning. And every now and then you can get a, a, a misfeed, which could cause some downtime. So, Let's take a look at, in summary, the advantages and disadvantages. We have minuses for disadvantage and plus for advantage. And these are these might be a little bit subjective. And again, I mean, we do both of these at Transmatic. Um, and we will, even though we seem to lean more toward the transfer press type operations, it seems like the kind of parts that we do lend themselves to that, that process. But again, we'll, depending on your, the product need, we're going to find and we're going to select the right process for the part. So with that, I would like to thank you. And um, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Ron. So yeah, we do have a couple of questions. And the first one I want to ask you is, what do you see being the primary cost difference in piece cost between progressive and transfer stamping? Yeah, that's a great question. I have a, a fairly simple answer. I can break it down into three categories. Volume, the annual quantity that's required on a particular part, the material that's used, and how fast and efficient the process is running. So when you talk about volume, if you have a part that's, say, 100,000 pieces a year, you may not want to invest in a progressive die because it becomes kind of cost prohibitive. Whereas in a transfer operation, you can build a tool fairly economically to run 100,000 pieces because that, that becomes a, a factor. When it comes to material, you have to be real conscious of the type of material and how much that, that carrier web is acting on the piece cost. And again, we talked about speed. You have efficiency and speed by running multiple out, as we talked about multiple times, but um, you don't want to run four out and then have to worry about, okay, how am I monitoring each of these parts? You have to think about traceability. That becomes also a, a concern. So when you add it all together, I mean, by the, taking just those three factors, you can easily come up with the right process. So it kind of depends. It does. That makes sense. So how many parts can be run before a die has to be rebuilt? And does that vary between transfer and progressive stamping? Yes. Um, I would say that, you know, at least in our case, the way at Transmatic, we have a perpetual ongoing die maintenance program. After a run, all those tools are all, they're always inspected. If we see any wear or any uh, chipping of any punches or dies, uh, those dies are, re are either replaced um, or they are um, regroomed to be to be made like new, so it's perpetual, and and it's the life of the part. So you pay one time for a tool, and you never have to worry about it again. Whereas in a progressive tool, because of the way that the nature of the process, you have uh, you have die land on all the cutting surfaces. After you get through your die land, you're into the clearance section of the tool. You can only grind those surfaces so many times before you're into the land after shimming them 
you know, X amount of times. And then you pretty much have to replace all the steels. Uh, even though the form stations may be intact, all those cutting edges are going to be are going to be so worn out that you're going to have to have them replaced and you almost have to replace the whole die. So it becomes a, there's a useful life in my mind uh, for a progressive tool and not so much in at least the way that we track our our transfer operations. Hopefully that answers that question. Yeah, thank you, Ron. So you mentioned that Transmatic really focuses on transfer press stamping. So can you tell me a little bit about what presses are available? There's a multitude of presses available at Transmatic, different shapes and sizes, smaller frames that only run five stations, others can run 30 stations. So having that type of flexibility gives us so much, so many options in the marketplace for certain applications and complexity depending on the part and the complexity and, and the volume uh, there used to be a time i thought that waterbury ferrule presses were obsolete well yeah you can say that um, but having them available for certain applications because they're infinitely adjustable for running lower volume applications they're perfect okay uh, they, they can't hold the tight tolerances but for that we have bairds we have servo presses we have other types of uh, operations that are more state of the art. And, and as we go forward um, in our business, you can see the investments that we're making are now more into the state of the art, high tech, high tight, tightly tolerance type operations. So it's good to have all that kind of flexibility in the organization. The other thing I'll say is we have duplications of presses. So we don't have just one press to run one part. So if something happens to that press, we have other presses that can fill that gap. Risk mitigation. Exactly. It's very important in today's world. Yep, you got it. Awesome, well, thank you, Ron. And with that, I just wanna say thank you to everyone who listened in today. Please don't hesitate to reach out to Ron or myself if you have any additional questions on what we presented or anything about Transmatic in general. Uh, we'd love to talk to you about your next project. Thank you.